Okay. Um, it's a little dark. Uh, I've spent the entire day in meditation, on and off, just turning off the phone and doing something I can control, which is me. I may not be able to fully control the situations that I'm facing at this time, and I have to wait on certain processes and other people, but what I can control is me, and that's most important because it would be very easy right now to emotionally spiral, which I, which I, if I said I haven't, would be a total lie. I have emotionally spiraled several times in the last few weeks. But that type of release brings clarity. I don't know if you ever heard that before, but tears bring clarity. And, and so I spent the weekend taking a moment to celebrate community, to celebrate friendship, which was beautiful and much needed, especially with the circumstances that I'm going through. So I vowed that today was going to be a day where I energetically put energy back into me, listening to guided meditations, being in deep thought, journaling, really understanding me and filling back up my cup because that's the only thing I can control right now. And while I've been in this 12-hour day of self-care, and that's, that's crucial, it's self-care. I may have not showered yet. That will come. But it's been a day of mental self-care. I remind myself how far I have come. I remind myself how far I've come. You see, like 10 years ago, I was a cocky son of a bitch. My ego was huge. And... I didn't treat people fairly and I was in survival mode and I had a lot of selfish tactics to present to relationships and friendships, etc. Though I like to I like to consider myself that kindness in my heart has always shown through. There has definitely been times in my life where the ego took over kindness and created well, created part, created seasons of my life in my 20s that were hard life lessons, and I own up to those to this day. And so as I look back and remind myself how far I come, I also revisit the last six years and the effort put in to understand my triggers, understand my tics. Um, recognize healing, w- awaken to a spiritual awakening, um, putting in the effort of getting to know self because the reality was I didn't know who I was. I was masking myself in different identities, identities that I thought were what was asked of me through friends, through family, through people, and I was masking who I was. And the beauty of going to therapy, the beauty of life coaching, the beauty of walking into your healing, the beauty of facing yourself, facing all your mistakes, facing all your trials, your traumas, is you finally get to a place where you can look yourself in the mirror. And like I said in my vulnerability video today, you're seeing your inner light because you've, you've, you've done the hard work. And I feel like that hard work is downplayed a lot. Healing is a heavy load. It doesn't happen overnight and it doesn't happen in a few months and you're constantly healing. Sure, there could be seasons that are a little bit more uplifting and more um, lively and then there's other seasons that are a little bit more dark and grungy and this um, idea of shadow work. But in all, a healing journey takes steps. It takes movement. So when I first started my healing journey, I was just healing my 20s. I was like, listen, this, this I laid it out to my therapist. Like, these are all my problems. Here's my trust issues. Here's, here's where I went wrong. Here's where I'm still in survival mode. Here's where I don't love my body right now. Um... Here's, here's my postpartum depression. That's where I originally started. 
And then as I maneuvered, as I moved through, then it was like, okay, we got through the 20s. Awesome. Let's get into our childhood. Okay, let's talk about that childhood. Where's your childhood trauma? Whoa, there's a lot of that too. Do you realize how much there is? Between feeling like you're the black sheep because you are adopted to losing your father to cancer when you're 11 to your trials and traumas in your in your teen years and losing friends to horrific traumatic accidents. Okay, let's unload that. And then you revisit some trials and traumas that are a little bit more present because now, okay, we've done the heavy lifting, we've done the back work, and now we are pushing forward. We're seeing presently. We're seeing maybe the last six years, maybe the last 10 years, and you're kind of like really pushing the envelope to really see like, okay, it's me. Thank you, anti-hero Taylor Swift. Um, And what do I still need to work on for me now that is still present that I need to cut out? Was toxic behaviors, patterns, relationships, etc.? And, you know, for the last few years, I've had a space that was my sanctuary, which was my little lake house with my kiddo. And last summer, I moved in with someone I truly thought was the love of my life. And unfortunately, we just, we could not align. We could not get an alignment that was needed for growth. And because I've still been in a dedicated space of growth mindset and a dedicated space of healing... I started freaking out. And yes, I would say there were some self-sabotage moments in that season because I really want to continue to push the envelope for myself. And I did so. Some in the healthiest ways, some in the not healthiest ways, but I did so. And we moved through it and this is where we are now. And one thing I've discussed before, which I believe was in either my rock bottom video uh, last season or my anti-hero uh, video a few, like, a few uh, last season as well, is I discuss, like, when you're going through healing, when you're hitting these rock bottoms, when you're when you're in this space of transformation, of change, of pivots, of, of challenges, you lose people you thought were at your table. And I know I mentioned it briefly on my Mo Vulnerability video that I did earlier today, but this is, like, more of my thoughts, Okay. And now I'm in the space where people who I really thought were at my table are not there. And the universe is really pushing me into a space of, okay, we're even clearing out people you thought were going to be there presently, who you may have thought will be here a year from now. And we're really cleaning this out because you've stepped into a truth, you've owned up to your mistakes. And we have more weeding out to do so that you can get to your higher self. So you can get to that peace, that abundance. And so as I'm maneuvering through one of the scariest trials of my existence, I'm also facing certain people, uh, family who I, I thought would be there. And they're not. And I'm needing to learn for myself that that's okay. And so what do I do to make sure that I know that I'm okay? What is the one place I can control outside the circus that is life right now? Well, it's me. I have that. I can bring that peace to myself. I can take the time to meditate all day. I can recognize like, hey, I'm going to disconnect from the world, from socials, and I'm going to put myself in a very deep and heavy healing today because I need to do this for me because I have needed to create those reminders throughout the last challenging weeks that I haven't gone this far without go- without wanting to push forward, without with wanting to close the door. And it would be very easy for those cruel people out there and people who have um, negative intentions on me to really hope that I spiral, to really hope that my depression gets the best of me and that I, I emotionally just get to a really negative space. But the thing is, is once you've really focused on that healing for as long as I have and really put in that hard work, no matter the trials and battles that I am facing, I will always lean back on my healing first and foremost because that's what's carried me through this entire time. Now, some of the trials I'm facing right now, if I try to face three years ago, I honestly probably wouldn't be in the same space, same mental space, to be quite honest. 
But because I've put in the dedication to uh, my videos on here or to my journaling or to my meditations or my walks or just learning and growing and evolving and really pushing that growth mindset for so long, the trials I'm going through are very scary. But I'm also at a space that my faith and my trust in the universe and my trust in God is the greatest comfort and hug in my life right now. And so I want to bring a testimony on that. And the reason I want to put a testimony on that is because I recognize people who watch my socials also may be going through their own healing journeys. And I want and I want to speak up on this as much as I possibly can that when you're healing, you're not you may feel like you're doing this alone, but I promise you there are people like myself and others who are willing and wanting to help you move, maneuver through this so that you're not alone. We, we downplay this healing journey um, because it's a scary one. Um, it's a time where we really are owning up to our faults. We're owning up to our mistakes. We're owning up to our toxic behaviors. We are owning up to passive versions of self. We're taking off the mask. We're taking off the veil. And we're saying, hey, listen, I have found my most authentic version of self and I love that person inside of me. And I'm still willing and working to create that space that she continues to grow. He or she continues to grow. And again, it doesn't happen overnight. And again, you do go through seasons where they're a little bit lighter. So you're not doing the heavy lifting as much. And then you go through other seasons where the heavy list lifting is all that. And some of the seasons you're doing the heavy lifting because that's, that's, uh, you need that more than anything. It's much needed. Um... I am, though I'm facing some scary days, I am so proud that in this time, the girl I knew when I was little, the one that was into mission trips, the one that was there for her youth group, the one that there was there for her friends, the one that had that motherly nurturing characteristic about herself at teenage high school parties, is still inside of me. And I let her back out. There were many years where I masked her and I hid her in a box because I was afraid to let her back out because of the hurt, because of the grief, because of the traumas that happened in my life. And so I went into an ego season where my ego fed into everything, fed into my relationships, my friendships, my career, and I thought I was all that and then some. And then by the blessings of God and the universe, I had my miracle. She's my most amazing piece of me. And that was God's way of saying, okay, girl, hey, hey, I see you. I'm giving you this miracle. I'm giving you this blessing. And as I do so, you need to do something for me. You need to work on yourself. You need to better yourself. You need to become the best version of yourself. And it's not going to happen overnight. And it's going to be scary. And it's going to be triggering, but you need to do so because what you're doing right now is teaching your daughter how to become the best version of herself. And if you continue to break those ancestral curses and break those toxic cycles and break down anything negative in your life, you are building a brand new and healthier path for your daughter. You are paving a way for sunshine and rainbows and unicorns that your daughter deserves that you have never felt. And the reason I've never really felt that, well, for one, I was, I have always felt like the black sheep because I'm adopted. I have also felt over the years, this, this darkness, this energy from my biological father. I have never met him, but I have felt that in me for so long. And I've been maneuvering through those parts of him that I feel are in me, which I know I've discussed in previous videos. And I'm at that space of like, you know, like no matter the trials that I'm facing, I will continue to battle forward because I, I recognize that peace and abundance is down is it's, it's, it's getting there and I'm getting there. And, and as I speak on it, as I'm a voice, as I'm an advocate, I know others are going to witness that and they too will see their own light. And that's so important to me. You know, my superpower I have found over the last few years is I genuinely love being a healer. I love sitting with you. I love talking with you. I love listening to you and helping you maneuver through your feelings, your emotions, and, and 
allowing that safe space, that sanctuary space to encourage your own growth. And in doing so, I continue to do that for myself first. So though I may not have absolute full control over situation right now, which I would desperately love, what I can do is I can continue to work on me and have hope for myself and allow that light within me to continue to shine. No matter, no matter the betrayals, no matter the daggers, no matter the rocks being thrown at me, no matter, no matter those feelings of feeling like I'm being pushed to sacrifice myself, I will not do so. And as I said in my Mo vulnerability, my Mo vulnerability video today, it's as though I'm at a cliff, and the people behind me, the darkness are those who are really pushing me to jump off and they're doing everything in their power to see if I will or if their weight and negativity uh, will push me to do so for myself. So they can say, aha, see, I told you so. But what they don't see is what I see when I'm standing on that cliffside. I see the, the, this beauty of light that is holding me and grounding me, grounding me to the earth. And I see this beautiful light with this beautiful view of mountains. And some days it's a beautiful view of the ocean, this unknown, right? This masterpiece that God has created from, and, and it's all right there. And I'm like, okay, as long as I can continue to see that light and that light is shining within, no matter how many stabs are in my back, no matter how much of that metaphorical blood I am shedding on the backside, the light in front of me is continuing to heal me. The light in front of me is continuing to heal me. And that, guys, that right there is one of the greatest ahas, blessings I have come to find within myself, especially right now. Especially right now. So as long as I continue to be authentic to myself, those people who disappear, those people who walk away, those people who have betrayed, those people who are cruel, they're not going to matter to me because I know inside me the light that is keeping my spiritual tribe, my friend group, so strong. And I'm so grateful for that, especially right now. Has there been pain along this way? 100%. Has there been a few moments that hurt more than others? Yes. Has there been a moment of heavy, heavy grief? 100%. But I did not come this far to only come this far. I haven't worked that hard to just give up now. And so why I'm giving that testimony is to remind you to not give up on yourself. No matter the darkness within, no matter if it feels like everything around you is on fire, please don't give up on yourself. I have personally witnessed firsthand suicide for some really, really good friends. And I've also witnessed tragedy and car accidents. I have witnessed the darkest depths of grief. And I've also witnessed how I've masked myself to cover up that grief for so many years to a place that led me down a path where my ego was what's keeping me alive. But now I can confidently say seven years later that I've put my ego on the shelf. And I've allowed myself to be vulnerable with you. And I've allowed myself this vulnerability to, to walk into the best version of me. And I'm not there yet. I'm getting there, but I'm not there yet. And while doing so, I'm saying, okay, here, here are my mistakes. Here are my problems. Here, here's where I was wrong. Yeah. Here's where I need to work on me. Here's where I was mirroring narcissistic behavior. Here's where I was mirroring emotional manipulative behavior, but I'm working through all of it because I want to be, I want to be so much love and light that my daughter follows that same footprint. And that's so important to me. I want to be that same love and light that my daughter follows that same footprint. 
She deserves that. She deserves that mom did all the heavy lifting and, and took care of all the darkness and all all the ancestral curses and, and all the cycle breaking so that she can live a more freer, more lighter, more abundant life. Where those weights of our past will not affect her because I'm taking it all in. I'm eating up all that darkness. I'm taking it all in. I'm digesting it. I'm figuring it out. And then I'm exuderating light. Even if for some times that light that I'm exuderating is just for me and for me only. But sometimes that's all we need is that little light inside of us to be for ourselves because that in, that in its own way is our own hug. And that's been a big part of my day today. Today has been a hug for me, not for anybody else, but for me to remind myself that I am beautiful, that I am brave, that I'm strong, that I'm love, that I am peace, that I am light. And in time, by trusting the process, by trusting God, by trusting the universe, by trusting my spirit guides, by trusting the process, all will work out with light and love. And until that happens, what I can control is how I respond. What I can control is how I take care of myself. What I can control is not giving up on myself in this healing journey. So if there's anything you get from this is you need to just, I hope you can, I hope there's a testimony in there for you that you can continue to keep going. That right now it may feel foggy, but I promise you there will be a season very soon that is so full of abundant light and joy that the season where we are feeling like we can barely breathe will be a very distant memory. I love you. You got this. If I can do it, so can you. I can do it. You can do it. I love you guys. Talk to you soon.